Hi guys and welcome to another 7 minute lecture. I haven't touched on fiction for a while so I figured we might as well cover a writer today. The South African author Wilbur Smith was as most of you would know one of the most internationally popular adventure novelists of recent times. He mostly wrote historical fiction and even though they aren't exactly literature from a popcorn entertainment perspective He's up there with the best. He's written these sweeping epic tales that are mostly filled with swashbuckling action, exotic locations, black and white characters in terms of both skin color and morality. And most of these stories were set in sub-Saharan Africa since that's where he grew up. But there's also plenty of action in North Africa, the Middle East, Europe and all that. His books are almost always set in very important historical backdrops that serve as the canvas for all the carnage and adventure. Wilbur Smith is mostly known for three different historical series. He has tons of other books as well, but these are uh, what he's mostly famous for and what I consumed avidly when I was a teenager. He has the Courtney series that covers an entire dynasty called the Courtney's. It's over 20 books. And it spans from the mid 1600s all the way to the 1980s. So it traces this dynasty, this family who start off as privateers in the 1600s and they then get captured and taken to the Cape of Good Hope. And from there, the original Courtney's kind of their story starts. They establish a presence in South Africa and they become intertwined with the history of the region. So depending on which generation of the dynasty he covers, they could be helping uh, Prester John in Ethiopia defeat Arab armies or trying to escape the siege of Khartoum or hunting elephants in the deep jungles or fighting Nazis in the South African border. The list goes on, right? So if you're looking for an action-packed historical fiction series where you can tolerate slight bits of unintentional racism here and there like I can, the Courtney series is one of the best. To give you a small taste of just how action-packed and sweeping the stories in the series are, let's just take one random book in the series, Birds of Prey, which is chronologically the first in the collection. That book alone has duels to the death, jailbreaks, ivory hunting, battles with pirates, both religious and non-religious warfare, ancient relics, prophecies, torture chambers, lakes filled with crocodiles, fights with lions, explorations into the African wilderness, confrontations with ancient tribes, Christian crusaders, Arab slave traders. That doesn't even cover half of it. So that should give you a taste of what it's like. The other series is known for among the other two. One is the Ballantine series, which is also about a dynasty called the Ballantines. This is set mostly in Rhodesia or modern day Zimbabwe. And just as how the Courtney series predominantly has a South African flavor to it, this has a distinctly Zimbabwean flavor to it. There are only four books in the series and they are mostly set in the 1800s. And even though they aren't as sweeping as the Courtney books, they are very interesting and they add a, a lot of uh, vital stuff to our understanding of modern day politics in that part of the world. So Wilbur Smith goes into great detail about how uh, diamond mining interests, ivory hunting interests, the slave trade all converged to make things what they are in Zimbabwe today. And it also covers some of the first full scale battles between the white settlers and the local African tribes, such as the first uh, Matabele War, which was be between the British South African company and the Matabele tribes. So it's got a lot of fascinating historical detail that's worth checking out. And his final series that he's probably the most famous for is the Ancient Egypt series. Many of these were written when he was well past his prime. And I've only read the first three books when I was a teenager. So those are the only ones I've read. These are historical fiction, but some of them like the third are straight up fantasy novels. The first book is my favorite in the series. It's probably his most famous book. It's called River God. And interestingly, the main character is a eunuch, a slave who was forcibly castrated by his owner when he was a child. 
as punishment. And th- he's so brilliant. And he is this genius polymath who is the first person narrator of, of the first book. And despite being a slave and a eunuch, he's so incredibly arrogant as well. And he ends up becoming the advisor of the Pharaoh because he's such a genius and he never feels sorry for himself. And he just manipulates everybody. And to give him a softer touch, he's in love with the princess despite not being able to desire her physically. So uh, he's a great character. And this series has a lot of great action and adventure set pieces with the historical backdrop as well. Like the uh, Hyksos invasion of ancient Egypt that happened three and a half thousand years ago, which is when this series is set. So some people don't like Wilbur Smith because the sex and violence can often be over the top. And I agree, it is over the top. Most of it is old-fashioned pulp adventure formula taken to this colossal level of grandness and scale. So you have the swashbuckling, charismatic white hero who always defeats the villain. You have the brown or black sidekick whose job it is to be a true friend and to be useful, but not so useful that you overshadow the white hero. You have the damsel in distress who needs the hero to rescue her. Although to his credit, Wilbur Smith does have many female characters who are formidable and fierce as well. He's also criticized for the way in which he portrays tribal society and all that. But uh, once again, as I said, you need to be able to tolerate a low level of unintentional racism to enjoy his books. And ironically, his work also has a surprisingly sophisticated anti-racist undertone where he provides perspectives on things like apartheid, the Boer War, the ANC, the ivory trade and stuff like that with a level of detail that's hard to replicate even in non-fiction. And the fact that he manages to seamlessly incorporate all that into these swashbuckling popcorn tales of pirates and hunters and mercenaries and soldiers and all that, that to me shows what a great writer Wilbur Smith really is. So if you're looking for these exhilarating summer blockbuster type epic action novels that also manage to be informative in some way, Wilbur Smith is one of the best possible picks available. I would recommend starting either with River God or with Birds of Prey. If you like content like this, please don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you. Take care. And I'll see you soon.